You're Mr Hamilton? Aye, Hugh Hamilton. Uh, this is Julia Brennan. Yes? Uh, she was with me when I got the message from Helen. Right. I'm Superintendent Holland. I'm keeping an eye on things here. Keeping an eye? Haven't you got headed out yet? Not yet. We don't even know if she's still in there. How'd you find out? We've been trying to make contact with Mr Crowley by phone. By phone? All we're getting is the answer phone. Well, can't you try a megaphone or something? Not yet. At the moment, if Miss Morgan is in there, she's a captive. If I start yelling threats over a megaphone, she becomes a hostage. And what happens then? I mean, I mean, what if he threatens her? If Miss Morgan's life looks like to be in danger, then the stakes go up. And there are no further options open to me. But my job is to make sure I don't have to resort to escalation. Oh, God. Sounds like a stalemate to me. It is. That's why I'm bringing in a negotiator. Negotiator? I've heard the tape you provided. She left the message on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. So she's been there at least half a week. We don't know what's happened in that time. I need a specially trained man to persuade Mr Crowley, if he's still there, to pick up the phone and talk. And allow us to speak to Miss Morgan and maybe come out without any fuss. Preferably before breakfast. So, uh, what are we here for? I'm going to need to know more about Mr Crowley. You know him? Aye, but well, not as well as some people. I mean, JJ would know it. Yeah, well, the fewer people involved, the better. I'm trying to keep a lid on this. And the last thing I want is a media circus. What I want is to make sure that the only people who know about this are you and the officers on the scene, right? Now, tell me about Crowley. Well, Jules, you've had more to do with him. Yeah, and I wish I hadn't. Bob? Paul? Uh, Mr Hamilton, Miss Brennan, this Aye. is Inspector Murray. Aye. He's trained in negotiation in situations like this. Miss Brennan knows Mr Crowley. Aye. Tell me about him. What is there to say? I mean, he's a slime. Look, I'm going to need something more specific. Well, he's a... Well, I don't know. He's obsessed about winning. He's always confident, you know, thinks a lot of himself. And uh, is there a relationship between him and the woman? Well... Uh, you don't sound very sure of yourself. Helen's my lodger. If there was anything going on, I, I think I'd know. Any contact yet? We've been ringing, but all we get is the answering machine. Is he in there? We're working on that assumption. Why not just check? There's a complication. Yeah? Mr. Clifford Crowley is the holder of a firearms licence. Oh, wonderful. What? So you're saying he has got a gun in there? It's a possibility. Well, he's not going to have a licence just for the hell of it, is he? Let's go on with it, then. Can you set me up a squawk box? Yeah. Oh, OK. Give me the phone, Bob. Every note building to, to a movement, like a gesture contributing to an emotion. And they batter at the door yet again. I can't take your call now. Please speak after the tone. If you must. So, Mr Crowley, this is Paul Murray. I'm standing outside your flat under the assumption that you're there, but not answering the phone. A new one. And now, uh, as long as I'm labouring under that assumption, without you confirming it, we're both wasting each other's time. And I'm tying up your phone line. There must be some way to resolve this. Mr. Murray? Mr. Crowley? You are at home, then? Yes. I got your colleague's messages. I assume Superintendent Holland is your colleague? Yes. And, uh, what rank are you, pray? Inspector. Oh, so. I've been downgraded. I don't know whether I should feel insulted. I don't think so. I'd like to think of myself as a chief constable in the making. Oh, a humorist. Well, Inspector Murray, now that I've obliged you by confirming my presence here, does that mean you'll leave me alone? Uh, not just yet, I'm afraid. Why not? Because we think Miss Morgan, Helen Morgan, is there with you. Her friends are rather worried about her. Could you tell me whether she's there? Yes. Is she all right? She's fine. Can I talk to her? I'm afraid not. Why not? Because I don't permit it. So I don't know for certain that she's safe and well. Yes, you do. How? Because I've told you so. I'm a man of my word, Inspector. I'm in a difficult position here, Cliff. Oh, yes. While I don't disbelieve you, Helen's friends aren't going to believe me unless I can say I've spoken to her in person. Well, you could, um... You could be creative with the truth. 
I'm afraid not, Cliff. I'm too much like you, a man of my word. I see. And they'll just have to be dissatisfied, won't they? You're not going to let me talk to her? No. We couldn't do some horse trading? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, there's always room for a quid pro quo. How are you fixed for food? The freezer's full, thank you. Ah. Is there anything you want? Yes. We'd like to be left alone, Inspector. That's all we want, thank you. The problem being that I don't know whether Helen's there of her own free will. Well, she isn't. Yet. But she'll come round. Is that all, Inspector? No. I wanted to ask You're you... You're trying my patience, Inspector. If that's all, I'll say goodbye. Wait! Now, you know when you next have to take your pills, don't you, Daddy? One o'clock, dear child. They're in the bathroom. I know. Stop fussing. You're not supposed to fuss around like this until I go senile. Daddy! And I have no intention of going senile until I'm in at least my 80s. It's a terrible thing to say. No doubt. Terrible thing to be, I imagine. Well, that's a long way off yet. <laughs> I hope. I'd better be off. Colin! Yeah? I'm off now. Oh, all right. I'll just do a bit of tidying up and then I'll get off myself, all right? Are you going to come into the bread bin at lunchtime? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> See you later. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Well? What? Don't you love me too? Of course. So? So? Oh, for God's sake, boy, stop being coy and tell her you love her, or neither of you will ever get to work. <laughs> I love you, Suze. Now go to work. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye, Susie. Yeah, bye, Suze. <laughs> Dear girl. <laughs> yeah. I know she's my own, but you're a damn lucky fella to get her. Sure. Thank God she doesn't take after her mother. Yeah, right. You've met uh, the dreaded Lydia, then? Y yeah, Christmas. Commiserations, old son. Still, it could be worse. Susie's improved a lot over the last couple of years, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't swear blind that Lydia's not to blame for that unpleasantness a couple of years back. Not directly, of course. What unpleasantness? Not as if she got her onto the stuff, of course, but... Uh, what do you mean? She must have told you. Told me what? Susie was a heroin addict. Is that absolutely necessary? What? The Ronnie Rinald routine. Huh? The whistling? What's the matter with you? Look, my head's doing the rumba, and that whistling sounds like a cat sliding claws first down a blackboard. Uh, I overdid it yesterday, did we? Well, just a bit, yeah. Oh, only to be expected. Good party, though, wasn't it? I'm surprised Julia got away in the end. Well, she'll be in Spain by now. Yeah. Trying to order breakfast with the pigeon Spanish. She'll pick it up. <laughs> You'd know, I suppose. Well, it stands to reason. You live somewhere long enough, you're bound to pick up the lingo. I mean, look at you. What about me? Well, you've only been in London three years and you're speaking English already. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Don't mention it. You finished that bottling up yet? Yeah, nearly. I'll have to order more low-alcohol lagers. Yeah, all right. But have you ever thought about that? Well, low-alcohol lager? The way my head feels this morning, no. yeah. I mean, getting out, getting abroad, just taking off and wandering. I'm sure Mary would really appreciate that. See you, love. I'm just popping off round the world. Don't wait up. But do you think about it? Yeah, I suppose so. Any regrets? Well, it's, it's a trade-off, isn't it? I mean, Jules could do it because she's got no ties, but the reason I can't do it is because I've got Mary and Amy. Seems like a fair trade to me. What a romantic. Here's your coffee, Julia. Thanks. Hey, what were they saying? Oh, I just caught a wee snatch as I walked past them. Murray, the negotiator fella, is telling Holland he thinks he's getting through. I don't know why they don't just go in there and get him out. Well, you know, if he's got a gun... Yeah, I suppose so. They'll get her out. 
Crowley wouldn't do anything to Helen. He's got too much to lose. He's already in trouble, isn't he? I mean, he knows the police are out here. Yeah, I know, but it could be worse. How? Well, Helen could be still there with nobody knowing. At least we know where she is. Yeah, but we don't know how she is. Still, it's fate, isn't it? What is? Well, the fact that we're here. If you hadn't lost your passport at the airport, we wouldn't be here. How'd you make that out? Well, if you hadn't come back, yeah. I wouldn't have checked the answer phone. And I wouldn't have got Helen's message. If you hadn't nicked my passport, I know I wouldn't be here. Julia, I did not nick your passport. Call the other one, Hamilton. It lights up. Look, I did And when this is over and the police are out the way, I'm going to turn your kneecaps into ashtrays. <sighs> Mr. Hamilton. Yeah? You live with Miss Morgan? Well, uh, as I say, uh, she's sort of a part-time lodger. Inspector Murray wants to try something and thinks you can help. Oh, yeah, what? Well, if Crowley won't let us speak directly to Miss Morgan, we need some way to find out if she's all right. Hmm? Is there any question you can think of that only she could answer? Like what? On well, the name of a relative, something like that. Has she got any family? Our daughter, Marie. Yeah, but we can't use that. Why not? Because Crowley will know. He knows everything about Ditcham. Yeah, but surely... No, no, no. She's right. He's got a database on a lot of people in Ditcham. Yeah, uh, Helen will be on it. There must be something. I mean, you live with her. Any little thing that Crowley won't know, the more trivial, the better. Oh... I don't know. My dressing gown? Yeah, my, my dressing gown. She was saying the other week that it looked a mess. She'll remember what colour it is. And Crowley won't know? No. Hmm. I don't think so, anyway. Let's try, then. Come on. No, I appreciate that, Cliff. But you have to appreciate my problem, too. Can't we just talk no, about Paul? Oh, excuse me a minute, Cliff. Uh, what? We think we've got a question. Right. All right, Cliff, uh, I'll tell you what. If you won't let me talk to her... Will you let me ask her a question through you? Uh, devious. Uh, yes, I know it's very sneaky, but it would set my mind at ease. All right. Thank you. Well, Mr. Hamilton? Uh, what, uh, what colour's my dressing gown? Uh, Cliff, it's, um... Uh, what colour is Hugh Hamilton's dressing gown? Dressing gown? Yes, dressing gown. This works. Yeah, me too. A room with blue piping and coffee stains. Yeah, she's all right. Oh, thank God. All we've got to do now is get her out of there. Good God, this place is quiet. Oh, we've only just opened, Squire. Oh, I'm not complaining. Makes a change these days to be able to go into a hostelry where you can hear yourself think. Yeah, we'll make the most of it. This place will be buzzing by lunchtime. What can I do you for? Well, you, you know, I'm not entirely sure. I'll take your time. I think I'll wait till a respectable hour before I hit the hard stuff. I'll have a tomato juice. Right, you are. What's the sauce with that? Please. 60, please. Thanks. It is Mike, isn't it? Yeah. You used to live in that commune in Limerick Road when Susie was there. Yeah, that's right. Cool. That's going back a bit. Don't remind me. So how are you, Mr. Bryant? <laughs> fine, fine. Settling in. Quite a nice little flat Susie's got there. Do you, uh, do you, do you know it? Yeah, but it's just a couple of doors down. Good Lord. We're neighbours and I didn't know it. Did you <laughs> order that low alcohol stuff, boy? Yeah, I'll be here tomorrow morning. Just have to hope we don't get a run on it today. Do you know Colin? Uh, Susie's... Boy? Collie? Yeah, he's a good lad, isn't he, Mike? Yeah? Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> All things considered. All things considered? Well, you know. Well, considering he's black, you know. I, I didn't say that. No, I don't suppose you did. Uh, I'll say this for him. He's made a big difference to Susie. You can say that again. She was a very unhappy little girl the last time I saw her. I assume it's... Uh, Colin, who's made the difference? Well, she was getting there on her own. Cole just speeded the process up. <laughs> she has changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Am I missing a joke? No, it's just that you missed all the, uh, you know, reflexology. <laughs> yeah. And the flotation tank. <laughs> and Aristotle, the funniest stand-up comedian. <laughs> yeah. You could say Cole's made the difference. Hi, Colin. Mm. Good morning. Yeah, OK, I suppose. It's boiling out there. I think I've lost about a stone. Have an apple juice. Oh, thanks. I think I'll have two. Was Daddy all right when you left? Look, I wanted to talk to you about that. Why? What's the matter with him? Well, after you left, he started talking really strange, you know? It's like he's in a fantasy world. But he took his pills when he got up. I saw him. He was all right. 
I'm just telling you about what he was saying to me. What he was saying? Well, <laughs> it's daft. But I think you should check with Doc Fitzgerald anyway. What's the matter with him, Colin? Oh, he was rambling on about you being a heroin addict. <laughs> Maybe he was getting you mixed up with somebody met in hospital or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah? Colin. Susie? What exactly was he saying? Well, like I said, he was just rambling, you know, going on about being a heroin addict. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. I mean, why would... Why would he think I used to take heroin? I know. Well, it might be worth having a word with Doc Fitzgerald, don't you think? I don't know. Maybe we should just keep an eye on him. Yeah, I suppose so. What do you think made him come up with heroin, though? I don't know. Like you said, maybe he's getting me mixed up with someone he met in hospital. I absolutely hate that stuff. Yeah, me too. It's a bit spooky, though, eh? I mean, what if he says the same thing to somebody else? Could cause all kinds of problems. What do you mean? Well, I wouldn't like somebody going around telling people I used to be a smackhead. Somebody might believe him. Don't say it like that. What's the matter? Nothing. I'll have a word with him. There's really no need for all this, Inspector Murray. Paul, Paul. Look, I, I just want to be here with Helen. Miss Morgan and I can resolve this ourselves. Yes, yeah, she's still fine. No, I'd rather you didn't. Goodbye. What now? You know, for the first time in my life, I... I don't really know. You see, I didn't expect you to be so intransigent. I, I thought I could change your mind. I'm used to that, you see. It's what I do best when people over. Is that what you call it? We're the same. It's what we do. We're two of a kind. I don't think so. And you won't give me the chance to persuade you. You've had plenty of chance, Cliff. How long have I been here? Yeah, I, I know, but... But how long has it taken me to try to open your mind? I came of my own free will. Yeah, but I had to force you to stay. Oh, I'm very sorry. It's too late for that. Oh, God. This is all very new to me. Well, I don't get kidnapped every day of the week. Don't call it that. Please. I'm not going to argue semantics with you, Cliff. I was talking about... about weakness. A feeling of weakness, a sense of... Defeat. I've never known that before. Not even when you went to prison. It was Harvey Monroe who went to prison. And Harvey Monroe is long forgotten. Look, t take this pistol. I lost the firearms license along with many other things when I went to prison, so I had to begin anew. New name, new personality, new life. It was you who brought back that dead man, Harvey. And it was you who... I didn't do anything, Cliff. Being there was enough. Oh, God. I'm still not sure how this happened. I'm not even certain what has happened. <laughs> I'm not used to asking what do I do next and not having an answer. It happens to us all, occasionally. It doesn't happen to me! Welcome to the human race. And if I don't want to be considered for membership... Why don't you? Because people don't know what they want. They drift. They make mistakes, and worse, they don't learn from them. And they're not prepared to pay for them. Cliff, put that gun down. I learn. I even learn from other people's mistakes. Like Harvey Monroe's. Oh! <laughs> Here's most of all. And what about Cliff Crowley's? There aren't that many. Misjudging you. There's not much to be learned from that. That was a... That was a fatal error. Well, I'm worried, Bob. I think he's coming unglued. What do you mean, unglued? Oh, I might be wrong. I hope I am. 
And from what you've been telling me about Cliff, Crowley's a man with a lot of self-belief, very sure of himself, very self-contained. That's one way of putting it. We usually just call him a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the point is, that's not the guy I was talking to. I'm just listening to him now, talking to Miss Morgan. Well, what are you talking about? He's turned. There's no confidence there. I'm trying my best to stop it, give him a few options, but he's backing himself into a corner. That's what we want him, isn't it? No, it isn't. No. Look at it from his point of view. If your back's against a wall, where do you go? Forward. You lash out, you panic, you take drastic action. Oh, hell. I'll tell you, Bob, I've never had one like this. No demands, no conditions. How the hell do you deal with somebody whose only demand is to be left alone? We can't do that. I know we can't do that. I haven't got much to work with, have I? Let me have another listen. He's turned the music up again. He's been playing this all the time I've been talking to him. I keep meaning to ask him what it is. It's the Lieberstolt from Tristan and Isolde. How do you know that? I just know. Well, I'll say this for him. He's got good taste in music. Wonderful. Maybe we can get Bernard Levin to talk him out. <laughs> he's a great Wagner fan. Yeah. Maybe he thinks he's conducting an orchestra in there. <laughs> 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 you never know. Oh, oh, oh. Stuff. Oh. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. It was a shot. Blue unit, that is a go. I repeat, that is a go. My God, Just what has he done? Oh. Get into the flat. Get in, fast. 